They say the draft starts in Mobile and the Senior Bowl is next week, which means the entire NFL world is well into mock draft season. So it's about time we join them with our first mock draft of the year. But first, we've got to go through who's staying and who's leaving from the 2022 Washington Commanders roster. We're doing all that right now on Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Commanders fans? Welcome to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, and we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and the WUSA 9 Plus app for your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick. And we thank you for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. I'm David Harrison. My co-host sitting next to me on this episode is Chris the Rooster Russell, both of us credential members of the media covering your Commanders. Chris is doing it for Team 980. We can find he and Pete Medhurst Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern or anytime on the Odyssey app. And I'm doing it for Commander Country, where I'm a writer for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Yes, indeed, you are. Thanks uh, again for being with us, everybody, and for making us your first listen and view. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Here's what you're going to do pick between two and five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com. Use the promo code code locked on all right david our first locked on commanders mock draft of the year mock draft monday coming up later on in this episode but before we get to that before we can really sort through that we have to kind of go through the offensive and defensive free agents starting with the offense and looking at whether or not they will be back so we're just going to kind of we're, we're going to do our best to kind of eliminate the hardcore contract financials. I mean, of course, some of that shapes our opinion uh, and our discussion, but basically we're looking at, you know, who stays, who comes back uh, and who doesn't come back. And we'll start with the offense and a guy that I think was a very quiet, underrated, really good signing for this regime when they first came here from the Atlanta Falcons three years ago is Wes Schweitzer. Now he had some injuries yeah. this year, uh, but he's versatile. He can play right guard. He can play center. I uh, suppose he can play uh, left guard as well, which I think he did a little bit earlier uh, in his tenure here. Does he stay in your mind? I think he does. You know, I think that that veteran presence that, like you said, is also versatile, can do multiple things. I mean, came in at center in a pinch. You know what I mean? He's just he's kind of a calm guy. Uh, he's, he, he just, he brings that kind of an energy and you need those depth guys in your locker room. And I don't think he's a guy who's really kind of chomping at the bit, trying to go out and find a starting job somewhere in the NFL. I think he un kind of understands what his role is in the league these days. And I think not only does he understand, but he's accepted it and he's doing his part, uh, to do as best as he can. Yeah. I, I think that's a good way to say it because if Wes Schweitzer thinks he's going to go out and make a ton of money somewhere else by being a starting right guard or starting, you know, center, I don't see that. I mean, maybe he can make a little bit more, but if he's comfortable here, if he likes it, the surroundings and everything, I know that he does. Again, the only thing I would be a little leery of now is the injuries. But I mean, yeah. again, we saw so many of the interior guys get banged up the last two years. I mean, that's just a thing, right? That's why you have to have depth. And I think Schweitzer signifies, again, that depth capable of starting, capable of backing up in a couple of different positions. So I agree with you. I think Wes Schweitzer stays. How about Trey Turner? Uh, clearly, it did not work out from a health perspective. And yeah. I think you can make an argument it didn't help work out really from a talent perspective as well. Yeah, and I and I get the feeling that Trey, you know, he's he's not done chasing that starting job. And, and I think the Washington Commanders, it's it's best that they kind of try to move forward. You know, there's a lot of talks about maybe Sam Cosme moves inside full time, and you have Andrew Norwell out there as well. And I don't know that Trey's gonna want to come back and try to compete for one job, especially when you figure it's on the side of the line of scrimmage that he didn't even start for uh, for this team last year. And then you have kind of the issues of how long it took him to get up to speed and get up to shape and, and all that. I just, I, to me, it just feels like Trey Turner's time in Washington is probably done. Yeah. And I'm in agreement with you. Um, you know, I, I really was expecting more, but from the very first day of training camp, 
he was beat up and banged up and could never really get into a flow. There was a period of time where it seemed like he did get healthy and the offensive line kind of steadied and, 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 and calmed down. But then again, he got banged up again and, and, and there was just this musical chair. So um, yeah. good luck trying to find another guaranteed starting job is what I would say. How about Cam Sims? Uh, you know, a guy who, you know, at best on this team is a fourth receiver, uh, mm -hmm. arguably really a fifth receiver, and right. though still a part of the special teams unit uh, on this team. And again, that's how he's kind of made his his role and his bread over the Ron Rivera era. Is he staying or leaving in your mind? Yeah, that this is a hard one. And I went with I went with that he's leaving. And I think and the only reason I, I leaned that way is just because I think Cam, like you, like you just mentioned, at best he's a fourth receiver in this team. You know, at worst right now he's the fifth, and you don't know what they're going to do in free agency. Maybe go try to draft a guy, and if they draft a guy to maybe say replace Dax Milne as a punt returner, that guy may also bring enough receiving chops. And now Cam Sims is the sixth receiver, might be on the cutting block. Meanwhile, there might be enough teams out there that might value his skill set and his size and his length and his ability. But I think a lot of this depends on who the offensive coordinator is. I mean, if the offensive coordinator comes in and likes to use guys like Cam Sims in the red zone, which I know a lot of fans have been kind of curious, like, why don't we see more Cam Sims in the red zone? Then that might give him a reason to stay. And I would like to see him stay. I think the locker room would like to see him stay. Uh, but until we know who the offensive coordinator is, if this team is really going to go run first, pass second, I don't think Cam Sims wants to be the fifth receiver on that kind of an offense. Yeah, see, I have him staying, though, because I don't know what else A is out there. B, That's like true, you too. said, maybe an yeah. offense for him, meaning. Um, and, and I guess you could find a special team slash fourth receiver role somewhere, a red zone role maybe. Right. So I, I can't say it's a definite or I feel absolutely sure that he's going to stay. But like you said, a new offensive coordinator might have a different vision, uh, might see him in a different path. Remember how many big catches he made in 2020, especially on third down, you know, when they were down to Terry and Cam Sims, maybe an offensive coordinator dips back into that kind of role and sees that, visions that. Uh, and again, what he can help with on special teams, to me, I think you have to value guys like that, even though they don't put up a ton of numbers fantasy wise or box score bingo wise. I think you have to value guys a little bit more than maybe just, ah, you know, like, like I would value Cam Sims quite honestly, more than I would value Dax Mill. That's me. I would agree. If, if, if the option, yeah. you know, if the argument was one or the other, I would, I would value Cam Sims. So I, I have him staying David. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you're right. Hopefully you're right. The big one, well, not the big one, I guess, from a, a whole holistic perspective, but the fans are obviously going to be keeping a close eye on quarterback Taylor Heineke uh, because of many, many reasons. And we will dive deeper into the quarterback position later on in the offseason. So I'll get more into that. But I do think Taylor Heineke is leaving this team. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he's gone too. Uh, I know he said all the right things, wants to stay, wants to, could be a backup, all that. I think if he looks around and he says, well, the best I can do is maybe get two years, five million somewhere, then maybe I, I'm just better off staying here because I think, I, I think the team could make a, a, an argument certainly that he's worth that money. And I could make the same argument. The question for me is, can, can he get a two year, $10 million deal or $12 million deal somewhere else? And then I think it's probably, probably too rich. Yeah, absolutely. So those are kind of the key offensive players. I mean, Cam Sims, I think maybe is a little bit of a debate, but guys who really kind of shape just how this team is going to approach the offseason and where they need to fill spots. Uh, some other offensive free agents, though, that are are pending uh, future contracts with either Washington or another club. Center Tyler Larson, running back Jonathan Williams, running back Jarek Patterson, Nick Martin, the offensive lineman, and tight end Eli Wolf. But Chris, I know you have, you have a note here that you think Tyler Larson may be a little bit more significant uh, then maybe even I'm giving him credit for it, to be quite honest, because of Chase Roulier's health and, of course, uh, salary cap you know, concerns. Another veteran guy who knows the system, he's been around. Ron Rivera actually specifically mentioned him at his end of end of season press conference, or one of his, his press yep. conferences at the end of the year as a guy as well. Yeah, again, I don't want to overstate the impact, and he himself has had two major injury situations. So, again, you can't yeah. say, well, he stays healthy. He doesn't. But because of Roulier's health and cap situation, which we're going to get into in a in a bit, and and of course down the road, you know, I, I think you can make more of an argument there. But 
Uh, the bottom line Absolutely. is, is you can't you, look, you can't get rid of everybody. And if you're looking at getting rid of Trey Turner and if you lose Wes Schweitzer and if you lose Chase Roulier and if you, you know, then all of a sudden what was a weakness and what was a mishmash is really no better. And it's you're trying to replace three or four guys. Yeah, absolutely. So they're your offensive free agents for the Washington Commanders. We'll do the defense as well coming up next here on Locked on Commanders all the way up to our first mock draft. Today's episode of Locked on Commanders is brought to you by Prize Picks. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections, and Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you're going to watch, including the NFL. NBA, how about those Wizards blowing out the Orlando Magic? NHL, unfortunately, the Caps not getting the job done without uh, Ovi. You've got college sports, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, disc golf, Euro basketball, whatever you want. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, and they offer safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada, so download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users, you get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with their promo code locked on. So if you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right. Thanks once again for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and or view of the day. Subscribe now to the Locked On NFL podcast. Get daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories, and there's a ton of them. Plus, in depth analysis on the biggest games with the NFL key predictions every Friday and Monday. Local insiders cover the weekend with game to game episodes. It's Locked On NFL. Available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, David. So we went through the offensive free agents uh, and some of the pending issues there. And obviously, we don't have all of the answers um, uh, about who we believe will be back. Now it's the defense's turn. And obviously, the biggest question for many in commander land on defense and surely for the organization is what to do with Deron Payne. Do you think he'll stay or leave? And I guess by virtue or by extension, what mechanism, uh, if you will? Uh, he's staying. There, there's no look. Ron Rivera mentioned at the end of NC press conference, they've got to go through and look at what each guy brings to the field. But not only that, not only how good is our team with him, but how less good, worse, how much worse is our team without him? And you take Deron Payne off the field, this team is much, much worse right. than with him on the field. You got to pay this man. I think, look, for the sake of the franchise, honestly, they need to sign him quick. They need to do this with no fuss, no drama. You know what I mean? There's plenty of drama around other things. Just get the deal done. But I think that with the ownership sh situ ownership situation and when that might honestly be, uh, be resolved, I think it starts with a franchise tag. And then once a new owner comes in, you kind of start, mm -hmm. you talk money a little bit, you talk budgeting a little bit. That new guy or gal or group is going to want to win. So I don't think they're not going to green light paying Deron Payne. So I think a deal gets done before the deadline for the franchise tag guys. But I do think he starts off with a franchise tag. I love that. Uh, and that's exactly what I was thinking. Everything that you just said makes sense to me. I've always thought it was going to be a franchise tag first. Hopefully the ownership situation sorts itself out by late March if mm -hmm. not by the next league meetings in May, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, you can beat that July 15th-ish deadline. Sometimes it's a little bit of a different date if July 15th falls on a weekend. And honestly, I don't have that right in front of me. But you get the point uh, yeah. where you can then do a long-term negotiation. Now, who knows? Maybe they don't get to that point, but Teron Payne absolutely stays. The next one, I think is really much more of a debate than anything with Deron Payne. Let's just put it that way. And that's Cole Holcomb. No. David, I don't, I, I don't know what to do with this one because I, I know what Cole Holcomb is when he's healthy. He's, he's far from a stud, but he's yeah. a smart player. He's athletic. I think he's gotten better. I think he's a good teammate, but he obviously was not healthy last year and he's had some other injury issues in his past here in mm -hmm. Washington. What do you do? Uh, I think Washington wants to keep him, and I think that he stays because I think his value in Washington is is more uh, respected than it is outside of Washington. I don't think his reputation outside of these confines is or the, the, these these walls is is as appreciated. However, if there is a Washington defensive coach that goes elsewhere, they may sell another staff on Cole Holcomb mm -hmm. because they know what he brings to the locker room into the field. 
And if that head coach is a linebacker himself, he may appreciate some of those qualities, and that may cause Cole Holcomb to have a little bit more of a mark than we expected. But ultimately, I think Cole wants to stay in Washington. I think he likes his role. I think he likes his relationship with Jack and the, and the other players, and I think he wants to continue that. That's interesting. Interesting little nugget there. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously coaches uh, and we might have one uh, that works on the back end, obviously leaving the organization here. We will see uh, in terms of that. I think he stays, but I would I would put a big but dot dot dot. And when I say stays, but I mean, it's a one year deal. It's a maybe $2 million deal. And here's part of the reason why a he knows the system, all the things you said, but also don't forget and I know Commander fans don't care necessarily about this because they don't like these guys, but John Bostic, Dave Mayo, and Khalid mm-hmm. Hudson are all free agents as well, along with Milo Eifler. Uh, so they have a lot of free agents at that position, and yeah. you have to have a couple of bodies. No, absolutely. Yeah, you, you got. I mean, you got to flush out that position, and that's when we're making these lists. Like you list all those linebackers; those guys are important, and I want to make sure that we. You know, even going back up to to Tyler Larson, understand like we're doing a first round mock draft here. So when we say or when I say like these guys don't really impact the decision making process, it's because, you know, look, like like, I love John Bostic. But if you lose John Bostic, that's not going to impact your first round strategy. You know what I mean? But losing uh, Cole Holcomb could potentially depend on how you feel about Jamin Davis and and the rest of your pieces there. So so again, it's not that these guys aren't important. Just not as important when you're talking about a one-round mock draft scenario that we're talking about. Correct. Right. Um, I think we both agree that quarterback, you know, of course, Carson Wentz will be cut. We just discussed Taylor Heineke in the last segment. Uh, what about some of the other potential surprising cuts? Who do you have on your list that you would say, aha, that's a guy that we can cut for whatever reason, salary, injury-wise, or production yeah. that can open up some cap space and give this team some cap flexibility. Because right now, just, you know, again, right now, according to overthecap.com, as we record this, they only have about $7.3 million in yeah. cap space right now. Yeah, and that's before Carson Wentz. And, like, which well, I have Chase Roulier on my list, and, and, you know, I know I'm not alone in the media room on that one. And it sucks because it has nothing to do with the guy or what he's capable of doing it has everything to do with the fact that his, his body is just not holding up to his, mm-hmm. his choice of profession. And that's, that's terrible. When you see that tight end Logan Thomas, you know, and again, injuries uh, have been an issue and, and I think he's, he's slowed down from them. You know, he's getting a little bit older, but I think also those, those, uh, those injuries are kind of accelerating that process. And then unfortunately running ran back JD McKissick and, you know, look, JD may be a guy that just flat retires. I don't know what his future holds. You know, I just, in one way, shape, or form. And that's why I don't want to say cut necessarily, even though I'm the one who wrote the script and it literally says cut. But like <laughs> I just I feel like Chase Rulier, Logan Thomas, JD McKissick, probably not going to be on this roster, you know, by the time we get to to say April. And again, it could be a retirement, it could be an injury settlement, it could be whatever mechanism. But either way, no matter how they go, if they do go, then you're looking at about $38 million in cap space for the commanders after those three and Carson Wentz. Well, and, that's before and, you sign anybody else. Right. And and well, and you point out right uh, again correctly that the seven and a half million dollars that I cited from over the cap is without is with Carson without Carson right. Wentz being it's cut yet. Prior so to any moves. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That brings us to the third, you know, low 30s neighborhood, that type of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And then if you cut a few of these guys, then you expand even more. Um I went with a different name just for the purposes of our conversation. I agree with you on on Rulie. Maybe there's a way to restructure his deal and make him back, you know, earn it in incentives yeah, or, or whatever. I, I don't know uh, enough about the cap gymnastics in that way. Um, Andrew Norwell is a guy that I'll be really interested to see if he stays. He counts about five point eight million dollars. You know, we know he had a really rough start. I do think he got a little bit better. I do think he got a little bit better as the season went along. To me, not enough. Um, But again, if we're talking about all of those guys that we talked about at center and right guard and the and the change over there, how many ch- spots do you want to change? You'd be talking about yeah. if you cut Norwell, three different starting spots, basically up for grabs, not to mention all the depth and all the moving pieces. And then it takes guys, you know, time to learn the system and to learn all the mm-hmm. checks and to learn everything and forever to develop that chemistry. But I also can't ignore that Norwell probably costs a little bit too much based on his value. No, absolutely. And Norwell, look, he's a guy that I, you know, consider putting on my list uh, as well. So yeah, no doubt about it. All right. So now our stage is set. 
we know who we think we have and who we don't. And of course, this is a moving target. So it's just bear with us. That's why we do the show year round because constantly uh, information is always changing. But now, that's right now, it is time uh, to execute our first mock draft of the year. That's coming up next on Locked On Commanders. We know you love it. We know you need it. And we're going to bring it to you just like we're going to bring you our outstanding new partner. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. That's right. The NFL playoffs are in mid-swing. Championship weekend coming up, baby. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they are simply the number one sports book in America, and that's FanDuel. That's right. If you're new to FanDuel, FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make uh, betting on sports fun, like same game parlays. Oh, I love same game parlays. They are the best. You can get really creative and win a lot of money. And if you're a new customer to FanDuel, join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Here's what you need to do. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, get involved in one of those same game parlays for an even bigger payout. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Trust me, I use it all the time. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet uh, to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. All right, guys, back here to wrap up this episode, and we're going to end it with our first mock draft of the season. This one is a first-round mock draft. We're going to spend the first two segments talking about guys who may be coming back, may not be coming back. So now we're going to take that information, kind of what maybe we feel is going to happen, and we're going to use that to help drive our decisions here in the first round of this first mock draft of the year for us. And we are going to use Pro Football Focus's mock draft machine in order to execute this first exercise. If if you guys have you know mock draft machines or, or other options that you prefer, that you like more, by all means, uh, share those with us in, in the normal ways. If you have your own mock drafts that you go out there and you want to share them with us, you know, tag us on Twitter with them or email them or DM them, and we'll certainly go over. I uh, would love to actually go over a fan mock draft, like every mock draft Monday, uh, kind of go over your mock drafts and, and tell you where we think you would be fired or uh, where you would be hired if you got the picks right. So going through here, Chris, uh, the first 15 picks, again, we're only doing 16 for the commanders. So we let the PFF machine uh, pick the first 15 picks. Jalen Carter, uh, second straight Georgia defensive lineman going number one overall. Uh, this time goes to the Chicago Bears. Will Levis, the first quarterback off the board out of Kentucky going to the Houston Texans, and then Will Anderson, uh, by a lot of measurements, the best defender actually in the NFL draft uh, from a vacuum standpoint, goes number three to the Arizona Cardinals. Some highlights here. Bryce Young ends up uh, going to Indianapolis with the fourth pick to become their next quarterback. Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud goes to Las Vegas Raiders with the seventh pick. Anthony Richardson, Florida quarterback, going to Atlanta with the eighth pick, so apparently they're not sold on Desmond Ritter. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Quentin Johnston from TCU. Uh, Commanders fans are not going to be happy to see that if that comes to fruition. Devin Witherspoon, who's a guy that I've seen mocked to the Commanders, actually in some other mocks, he goes 12th to the Houston Texans by way of the Cleveland Browns trade. And then Peter Skaronsky and Paris Johnson Jr., the, the top two offensive tackles in this draft, 13th, 14th to the AFC East, the Jets and the Patriots, respectively. I know those are two guys that you would kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. Zay Flowers, wide receiver, Boston College, no loss there from the Commanders draft board. That brings us up to... 16th and chris i asked you to give me three so our, our top three players on the pff board are 14 16 17 christian gonzalez out of oregon lucas van ness out of iowa and michael Mayer out of notre dame the tight end but who are the top three guys you're looking at at the list available yeah and, and this is so early on obviously we haven't even gone to the senior bowl which you'll be at and and, right. and gone through the combine and the process and whatnot so i mean really we're kind of just trying to match up needs and players that are in the same ballpark for me i you know i, I avoid going a tight end i went with 
uh, PFF's number 14 overall prospect, uh, the cornerback from Oregon, uh, Christian Gonzalez, who had a big year. Uh, certainly, I could make an argument, depending on how things shake out, for a guy like Joey Porter from Penn State. Joey Porter yeah. Jr., I should say, not not his dad. Uh, he's long retired. Yeah. Uh, but then, as we all know, offensive line is probably this team's number one need entering the offseason. Uh, if you move the quarterback situation aside, because we think we have that sort of solved. Uh, mm. So I'm going to go and list Broderick Jones from Georgia, PFF's number 22 overall prospect and the number 21 overall prospect, Oklahoma's offensive tackle, Anton Harrison. And you mentioned Skaronsky and Paris Johnson gone. Otherwise, they would obviously uh, be in that argument, if you will, for pick number 16 um, yeah. for the Washington Commanders. So starting here with Anton Harrison, offensive tackle from Oklahoma, the 21st ranked player. On PFF's big board, 6'5", 315 is what they've got him listed as as a junior. Uh, PFF says, quote, Harrison is a nimble 6'5", 315-pound tackle who saw on the left side for the Sooners ever since he was a true freshman. This past season, he allowed only nine pressures on 447 pass-blocking snaps. End quote. I'm going to think that saw is supposed to mean started, not actually saw, but that's the way they wrote it, so that's the way we read it. So Anton Harrison, very big uh, left tackle prospect. Uh, and then you mentioned Broderick Jones, the all, also an offensive tackle, very big offensive tackle, six foot four, three hundred and ten pounds. PFF describes him as a bully and says, "quote You're not going through him. You'll have to go around him." He earned an eighty four point one pass blocking grade in his first full season, starting at left tackle for the Bulldogs. This is a redshirt sophomore, uh, and that's the only thing that probably gives me a little bit of hesitation. Ron Rivera in the past has, uh, as, as you as you know very well, Chris has has uh, kind of appreciated guys who showed consistent production in years mm -hmm. uh consecutive and then christian gonzalez is a very popular guy six foot two 201 pound sophomore gonzalez does everything you want from a top cornerback says pff size speed length hips and ball skills he enjoyed a breakout 2022 season after transferring oregon tallying four interceptions and six pass breakups and quote and don't 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 sleep on the fact that the 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 fact that christian gonzalez was a a very highly regarded defender went to Oregon and got only better, uh, that ability to learn a new system and thrive in a new environment actually very attractive to NFL coaches these days. So those are, Chris Rowe, those are the Roosters three-pack. We'll call them the three-piece the three piece rooster bundle. I don't know. We, we didn't really work on that before the show, so we're just kind of making that up as we go. Uh, <laughs> How about Christian a three-piece three combo? There you go. Three-piece combo with a, with a biscuit. I don't know what the biscuit is, but Anton Harrison and Broderick Jones. So there's your top three guys, Chris. So I assume the guy you're going to pick at 16 for the Washington Commanders will be one of those guys, but who is that guy? Right. So I'm going to roll the dice a little bit here and go with a guy like Broderick Jones. Uh, I think offensive tackle slash offensive line is more of a need than corner. I understand, obviously, picking best player available. You match best player available with need. Maybe it's a touch early, so obviously that could trigger another situation. But I like guys from big-time programs that have played big-time football games and that are tough and nasty a little bit and can get after it and can maul you, especially if you want to run the ball. Georgia ran the ball pretty damn well, and they can yeah. get after you on the edges. Absolutely. No, hey, look, and if you want if you want some attitude, you want an identity on offense, Broderick Jones is certainly a guy that's going to bring you uh, some some attitude. Look, Christian Gonzalez is a very, very popular prospect at this at this pick, and I don't hate it. I, re I really don't. Um, my question with with drafting a guy like Christian Gonzalez at 14th is, do you move Benjamin St. Juice back to nickel where he was training during training camp, was expected to play and all that stuff, but then he stepped in for William Jackson and he's looked really, really good when he was healthy playing in place of William Jackson. Or do you bring him in? Maybe you move Kendall Fuller into the nickel where he's had some success and he's also had some struggles at the same time. I almost wonder if you draft a guy like Christian Gonzalez, Benjamin St. Juice is your one, Kendall Fuller is your, or is your two, Kendall Fuller is your one, but Christian Gonzalez, when he comes in in those sub packages, he plays outside, and then either Kendall or Benjamin then shifts into the nickel, depending on the matchup. I mean, if you've got a short, quicker guy, maybe you put Kendall in there. But if you had a taller A.J. Brown type of slot receiver, you put Benjamin St. Jude's. Gives the defense a little bit of versatility. It'll be interesting to see where they go. But I'm going to go, Chris, with a guy that you didn't even talk about here. Mm -hmm. I'm going with Michael Mayer Ooh. at 16. And I know that's not going to make everybody happy because the tight end. Tight ends aren't the sexiest guys in the world. But I think when you look at some of the top teams – in the National Football League, they've got tight ends that really, really threaten. And here, according to PFF, 
Uh, Mayer is a polished, uh, as polished a tight end as you'll see in the draft, and he's only a true junior. Racked up 2,099 yards and 18 scores in his Notre Dame career. The guy's six foot four, 265 pound junior. I go back to my surprise cut prediction. If this team does move on from Logan Thomas, then we could potentially see Notre Dame's Michael Mayer become a guy that the Washington Commanders target. Add a little bit more to that offense. You put him, Terry, Jahan, Curtis, Brian Robinson out there. It's not the offensive line. I know a lot of people want the offensive line, and I don't hate you for it. Uh, but Michael Mayer is, is the type of talent that sometimes these teams will go a little bit against the grain just to get him. And maybe two, three years down the road, you got a Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, George Kittle type of guy on your hands. The question, though, Chris, how much pressure is on Ron Rivera and, and how much does he care that three years down the road you may have right. one of the best tight ends in the NFL right. when he's and drafting this year? No, but listen, I understand your argument and I understand all of your reasoning. And certainly you can address the offensive line in the second round. What complicates it a little bit more for me, David, by not addressing it under your scenario in the first round is you don't have a third round pick either unless you make a, a subsequent trade to pick up an extra third rounder, which they did move around the board and pick up extra picks uh, last year despite not having a third rounder. So again, keep that in mind. If your plan is to address offensive line early and often, it's a little bit limited if you go elsewhere in the first round and then don't have that third round pick as a result Absolutely. of the Carson Wentz yeah. trade. Lots of reason for speculation. If you guys want to speculate, give us your top three. If you want to give us your projected early number 16 overall pick please comment on youtube uh, of course email locked on washington commanders at gmail.com or on twitter dm or at lo commanders as well if you want to respond to our picks and or contribute your own we'll try and get to as many of them as we can but thanks again yep. guys for making the locked on commanders podcast your first listen and watch of the day your second listen and watch check out locked on nfl's pod uh the locked on nfl podcast again bringing you the insights you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest nfl stories locked on nfl available on youtube and wherever you get your podcast uh, on our next episode we'll be discussing the departure of one highly popular position coach for the team uh, and dive into why the commander should or shouldn't take a serious run at las vegas raiders quarterback for now, Derek Carr. If you want to join in that conversation, again, drop your comments in on YouTube, email locked on Washington Commanders at gmail.com, or again in the DM section at LO Commanders for David Harrison, covering the Washington Commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation and Commander Country. I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell Amanda Her Show on the Team 980 in the Odyssey app. Please be safe, be kind to one another. Thank you for joining us right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast.